So today we're going to look at um, balancing ionic compounds and how to make up their formulas. On this um, first slide you can just see there's a few different examples of ionic compound. In particular note in the centre one, that this, this image here it shows you um, the sharing of, of an electron between sodium and chloride. And this is what you need to keep in mind as we go through this whole process is that you still have to be able to explain why these formulas are what they are. So for example in this one here, sodium is a metal, it's a positive ion and it has one electron in the outer shell. Chloride over here is a non-metal, it is a negative ion and it has, um, it's kind of missing one of those electrons in the outer valence shell. The ions or the atoms are not very happy the way that they are and so sodium ends up donating its one electron in the outer valence shell over to chloride which accepts it and you can see down in this image here that we have a much more stable relationship where sodium and chloride are going to um, sort of share that electron between them. Okay, So now we're going to go through how you actually look at these ionic compounds and balance together. Okay, so to start you need to have a metal ion and also a non-metal ion in order to make an ionic compound. And we know that um, the metal ions are found over on the left side of the periodic table. And the ones that we are most commonly going to be use, uh, using are these sort of ones over here. So lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, um, those sorts of metal ions here. The non-metal ions are found on the right side of the periodic table. And some of the basic ones here that you can see will be um, the oxide ion. Remember that the non-metals change their names when they become ions. So instead of an oxygen ion, it becomes oxide. Fluoride ion, sulfide, chloride. Those are the main simple ions that we are using at the moment. Um, we will eventually move on to polyatomic ions. So things like SO4, 2 minus, which is sulfate. Okay. All right, so let's pick a metal and a non-metal in order to make a compound out of. So um, let's start with the metal, let's pick magnesium. So we're going to look at a compound between magnesium, which is a metal, it's a positively charged iron, and the other one we're going to look at at the moment um, is chloride, which is a negative iron. Um, we're going to do two examples, and the second one we'll look at um, also is from over the site, and so sodium over here is a metal ion, it's a positive ion. And over the other side we're going to pick a non-metal, so let's pick oxygen to do for that one. Okay, um, so the next screen we're going to look at how we actually remember what the charges are of these ions. Okay, so let's do our first example of magnesium chloride. So we have magnesium and chlorine, it's actually still chlorine because they're atoms at the moment, not ions. And so what you need to do is either go and look at your iron table or you can actually go back to those dot and cross diagrams and see how many outer electrons there are in that outer shell and therefore pick up um, the, the charge of them. So either using the tables or the dot and cross diagrams, we can see that magnesium is a two plus ion. And so what that means is that it has two electrons in the outer valence shell and it's not very stable like that. So it loses those two negative electrons and therefore its overall charge becomes two positive. Chloride is a one minus ion. We don't actually have to write that one down. And chlorine, uh, chlorine has one electron missing in the outer valence shell. So it has seven electrons instead of the full eight in the outer valence shell, not very stable, and so it prefers to gain one electron, and therefore it will have an overall one negative charge. The second example that we're going to do is sodium oxide, and so sodium, we can see either from the table, we can use the periodic table for this as well, um, sodium has a one plus charge, and oxygen has a two minus charge, okay, so we're going to do these two different Okay, so we're going to put the ions together and balance them. So the first thing that we're going to do is write down, we'll do magnesium first. So magnesium is 2 plus, 
And what this means is that it almost has, it has the ability to give away two of the electrons. So because of that, I'm going to draw it in this special shape. And what it shows by having these, um, these two kind of indentations here is that it has given away two of its electrons. So it's almost like it's missing a couple of electrons there. And because it is two plus, it has one, two gaps that it has given away. Chloride is Cl minus, and I'm going to draw it like this. And what that shows us is that chloride is a minus, so it's almost, it's gained one electron, so it's almost gained something um, into its structure. But this is not balanced. So we have two gaps over here, and we've only filled in one of them with the chloride ion. And so what we have to do is we have to put another chloride ion in there. And that makes a really nice balanced compound. So you can see that these both of these um, electrons have been shared nicely between the two ions. So if we were to write that formula down, we have one magnesium, and so we will write down Mg. And then over here we've got one, two chloride ions, and so we have to write down Cl and two down the bottom. So it's quite important that the two is placed um, down towards the bottom of that formula. When you're writing the charges on them, you'll notice that it goes up the top. So Mg2+, the 2 plus is always at the top on the right side. Cl minus, the minus is at the top on the right side. But the numbers when you're balancing the formula always go down towards the bottom. Okay, so that is MgCl2, which is magnesium chloride. Let's do the second example which was the sodium oxide, we'll just clear this off. Okay, sodium. Na plus. Okay, and so this one is only able to basically give away one, give away one electron. And now we're going to do the oxygen. So O2 minus. This is actually gained two electrons. So we're going to draw um, oxide is having gained two, sodium has only um, lost one, so it's not balanced at the moment, it is not an ionic compound, it's not balanced at the moment, so we draw another one on, okay, and so now you can see that there are one, two sodiums, two, one oxide ion, so if we were to write the formula for this one down, I'll do it up the top, we have sodium, and we've got two of them, so we write it down the bottom, oxygen, only one of them, and we don't actually have to write that one down, we can just leave it as O. So Na2O is sodium oxide. So this is how you actually end up explaining the formula um, when you're asked a question to explain why the formula is Na2O. You explain that sodium has only a one plus charge because it only has one electron in the outer valence shell, and so it gives away that one electron to oxygen. Oxygen has um, six electrons in the outer valence shell and therefore it can accept two electrons, that's where this two minus comes from, but it is not balanced with just one sodium and so you need one, two sodiums in a ratio to one oxide molecule or one oxide ion, sorry, okay? So, ex so explaining this formula comes from the, re the, the simple ratio of there are two sodium ions for every oxide ion. Okay, I'm going to show you the swap and drop method, which is kind of like, it's a much simpler, it's kind of like the cheats method of being able to figure out um, how you make up these formulae, and it can be a much quicker way of doing things. However, it is not enough, it is not appropriate to use this method to explain why the formula is what it is. So that's what we were just talking about previously. So let's do this with both of the two examples that we've done already, and I'll demonstrate to you how we kind of figure it out. So magnesium chloride would go first, so Mg2+, plus, oops, and Cl-. minus. And so the swap and drop refers to the idea that you take this two charge number, so this two, you swap it over to the other side, over to the chloride side, and drop it down to the bottom. This um, 
one, because remember it is actually like a one minus charge, you take that over to the other side and drop it down. And so what you would end up with is mg, and you've taken the one from here over down there. Remember, we don't have to write ones down, so it actually becomes like an invisible one that's sitting there. And then cl, and what we've done is we've taken the two from here over to the other side and dropped it down. Now we do have to write that two down, so we will write mg cl2. So it's a much simpler way of doing things, a much quicker way of doing it, but it doesn't explain it to the, to the full extent. Okay, so let's clear this one up and we'll do the next one. Okay, so the last one that we did was sodium oxide. Okay, so Na plus, and remember it's kind of like a one plus. Oxide O2 minus. And so what happens is that we're taking this one over to the other side, dropping it. So swap, swap, drop. And then we're taking this two minus, swapping it, and dropping it down to the bottom. So if we were to write this formula, you would write in A. This two has come over and dropped down. We do need to write the two. So write a two like that. And then with the oxygen, what we've got is we've got a one that's gone over and dropped down. And because we don't have to write ones down, um, that final formula would be Na2O. So that's the swap and drop method, the much simpler method. Um, but once again, it is not a full explanation as to how this formula is what it is or why it is what it is.